DIY Guitar Pedals DBE Bulldozer. This is a preamp slash overdrive for bass and baritone guitars. We'll give the clean sound here for a demonstration. And then we'll kick it on. This is with the gain set to low, the volume pretty much high. We have the blend in the middle, and then we have the EQ section set to bass rather high, mids are kind of scooped low, and treble is high as well. So as you can see, it brightens up the sound a bit with the, the EQ that it has, but it, and it acts as a little bit of a boost, but it doesn't do much more than that. Let's increase the gain a bit. And with it off. Back on. Now if we give it a lot more gain, it starts to get into more of the distortion and fuzz territory. And if we bring it all the way up to max, we get full fuzz distortion. It sounds great for chords. So here we have the schematic for the bulldozer, which is available on our site, www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, in the DBE section. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. The goal of this project was to make a preamp or an overdrive that gave me that clank sound that Frank Bellow from Anthrax had, or Dee Dee Verney from Overkill, or Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. Uh, another sound that I was trying to get out of this pedal was the sound that Nolly gets out of the stuff he does on Periphery. His bass tone is monstrous. So aside from using new bass strings, which I know gives that bright clanky sound, I noted that it required a bit of EQing and some blend knob tricks and asymmetrical clipping to get what I was looking for. So this is a bunch of mixing and matching of topologies and it came out something like this. So here we have a simple non-inverting input buffer. We use this to create some decent input impedance. Uh, I noticed that leaving the input impedance around 500k instead of 1 mega ohm gave me that closer sound that I was looking for on my bass and 8-string guitars, so I left R1 and R3 at 1 mega ohm, which parallels out to 500k. If you do want that 1 mega ohm hi-fi impedance, if you raise R1 and R2 to a 2.2 mega ohm resistor, you will get that. This buffer also serves as a means to split the dry signal off so that we can add our effects to the signal while still retaining that original clean signal because the clipping that's coming up right here will tend to clip out a lot of the low end and we definitely don't want to lose that. So here we have the soft clipping section. I use asymmetrical clipping to get the crunch that I'm looking for and then I use a high pass filter in the feedback loop here to cut out frequencies below 220 hertz. Coupled with the large amount of gain that this section provides, and even with the clipping diodes here to reduce some of that gain, I get the desired distortion of steel on concrete. Next, we have the tone stack, which is an active Baxandall 2 EQ tone stack, which is then followed by a peaking EQ tone stack. If you look at the build document, you can see how to change the values of these EQs, 
but the idea with the stock build was to affect the remaining low end of the signal to bring in some of that rumble around 100 hertz mark. Um, the other idea was to kill off the 330 hertz area where a bit of that middle bottom end is at, which for bass tone, I wanted to scoop out. However, for baritone guitar, this might actually be something you want to put in, which is why this EQ here, this, this peaking one, is so versatile. Lastly, I wanted to bring in the sparkly highs. I'm talking about all the way to the top, yeah. Somewhere up in the 5K mark. For bass, I like this as this helps give life back to dead strings, or if you want that clank that Nolly uses in periphery. At the end, we have another non-inverting buffer, and this allows us to mix our clean signal back in so that we don't lose any character from our instrument's tone. It also sets the output and peens right here from down to around 1K, which is ideal. So who is this project for? Well, I like to use it for my bass playing, where I can either subtly boost my frequencies a little bit, or if I want to play full on punk or metal, it works great in all these areas. It even does a good doom metal sound when I have the gain maxed all the way out. On baritone guitars, it works as a good overdrive, and it can help tighten up a lot of that low end on a tube amp. And I noticed that actually in the area of math rock, it does that rather well with uh, single coil pickup guitars like Strats and Telecasters. Uh, though you may want to play with the EQ values on the pedal just to get it to fit in that subgenre a little better. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you wish to support this channel and have us keep making videos like these, check out our site, which is www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and check out our pedals and kits. In this video, we went over the bulldozer, which is available in the DBE section of the site. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.